Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Tyler from After the Run, and today I'm going to talk about why I dedicated my last five miles of my marathon to my kids. All right? So, two weeks ago I ran a marathon. It was my first marathon in more than five years, and it was the best race ever. I trained hard for it, I worked hard, I lost 80 pounds, that makes a difference too. Uh, and even though I'm still obese, uh, almost just overweight, but right there on the border, um, even though I'm still obese, I had a fantastic run. Now part of it was because there was great weather, um, cool people, it was a really small event, and so uh, they really took care of us. Uh, it was called the Sand Hollow Marathon in Hurricane, Utah, and it was a blast. It was so fun for me. I didn't know anyone there. And I just woke up early, drove down, showed up by myself, ran this marathon. And I was able to do it. My goal, actually, my goal was just to show up. And I did that. Uh, but I ran every step of 26.2 miles. It didn't stop once. It's my seventh marathon, and it's the first time I've done that, even though I'm still a really big guy. So I was really excited about that. Um, part of the reason I was able to run through is I found someone to pace me and she was amazing. I, I ran behind her, I caught up to her at one point and, th and thanked her, um, but I, she was so consistent and steady and I ran with her during the race and um, at mile 20 I caught up to her and I just said thanks for running with me and we ran for a few miles together and I asked her how she was so consistent. She runs a ton. She runs like 100 miles a week. And she said this was a training run for her for Boston. So she had no reason to run it fast. And then um, she asked how it was going for me. And I said, well, I'm in a lot of pain. I have neuropathy. So my feet have been burning for the last 10 miles. And I, it's hard to concentrate. And that's why I needed a pacer like you. And she said, oh, I have neuropathy too. And I thought, this is amazing. I met someone else that's in a great deal of pain like me too. And I thought, oh, it's so nice that I'm not the only one suffering. And then she told me that she also just had chemo a few days ago and that she's suffering uh, with cancer that it came back. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it. So I'm here in the middle of a race and I'm so inspired by this woman. And we ran together for a few miles and it was just amazing. But what happened also at the end of the race, of course, the last five miles of the race are the hardest. And I got to those uh, last miles and I had heard this on another uh, either YouTube video or on a podcast, but they said, take the hardest miles of the run and dedicate them to someone. I thought, that's a great idea. I have four kids and a wife. That's five people. And so for those last five miles, I just thought about them and I thought about all the amazing things that they've done. and. Uh, it was so inspiring to me, like I started with my youngest and for that mile 21 I thought about her and she has overcome so much, she has asthma and life is hard for her, she's been sick a lot this year, she's in preschool and meeting new friends and trying new things and there's a lot of hard things about that and on top of all that she's the youngest in her family and it's hard to be young uh, and to chart your own course and so I just thought about her for a mile and all the obstacles she's overcome this year and it made it, it I wasn't thinking so much about my own pain and everything, it worked so great. And then I got to mile 22 and I thought about my boy and he's had different developmental issues and things and he's been able to overcome those. And this last year, he it's weird because he is the cutest, sweetest boy. But he can also, he has a little bit of a nasty streak in him and he's had problems at school and getting in fights and things like that. And this year he has made so much progress and I thought, about that progress and all the things that he's overcome and he's starting to read really well and he loves it and he's really doing well at school and I couldn't believe it because a few years ago we wondered if he'd even be able to make it in school at all and now he's thriving top of his class and he's making good friends and it's just fantastic and so I thought about him for a mile and then I got to the next mile and I thought of my daughter and she is amazing she just published a book uh, as a 10 year old, she published a book as a 10 year old. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. It's called Battle School and it's awesome. Um, but I thought about that and, and I thought about other things that she's done. She just finished this science fair and, uh, it, or a geography bee or I don't know what it was called. But she worked on this project and she knew that she wouldn't get a prize for it and it wouldn't be rated and compared to her friends, but she wanted to do her best. And so she, worked so hard she she was doing it on different rocks and we live in the desert and so she actually went out and found different rocks and and examined them and did research on them and when she had questions and she couldn't answer them she would get online and she'd google it and if she couldn't find the answer you know what she did 
she emailed professors at the university. And a few of them started corresponding and she met with them and, and talked with them and they gave her information. Um, they emailed back and, and they told her about these rocks. And one of them even emailed back and was so flattered he never had anyone reach to out, out to him in that kind of capacity before. And she did all this just because she wanted to do her best. She wasn't going to get rewarded or anything. And similarly, earlier in the year, she was in the spelling bee and she worked so hard on that. And I was able to think about that. And as a new kid in the school, she's also making new friends and stuff. And so for a mile, I just thought about her and how amazing she is and what an inspiration to me that was. Then I got to um, the next mile and I, I started thinking about my oldest, my son, and he's 13. And to just be 13 and survive is amazing because 13 is so hard. He's growing like crazy. He's grown almost a foot in the last year and he's dealing with puberty and acne and all the horrible things that come with growing up. And so just to survive is amazing. But on top of that, he's killing it in the band. Uh, he works so hard on his trumpet. And he's made some really good friends this year, which has been fantastic. He loves to read, and so he's read a ton of books. And we actually like to read the same kinds of books, so we read together a lot of the time. And so I thought about him and my daughter, and it came to me at the end of this mile. I thought, you know the amazing thing? I've been thinking of all these amazing, fantastic things. And I'm not even recognizing that on top of that, straight A student, gets along, never is in trouble, helps at the home, just all these things, that all those things by themselves are incredible. And my kids are doing those things. They're so fantastic. So I just thought about them for those four miles. And then of course I get to the end and the hardest mile, I just gotta think about my wife for, you know, those, it, well, actually I sped up so it was only about 10 minutes I gotta think about her and not 12. But it was so amazing thinking, that, especially this last year. We moved into a new home. This room that you're in right now, she built it, which is amazing. Like, she framed it. I helped a little bit, but she framed it. She put up the drywall. She mudded it down. She painted it. She built this. You can't see the artwork. Maybe I'll scroll up at the end. But she made the artwork for it. And even this bench I'm sitting on, she made it by hand. And she's just amazing, and she's done that through the whole basement. We have this incredible basement. She just, a few weeks ago, made our, our front room. She changed the entryway, put up a pegboard and uh, the hooks for coats and things, and totally transformed that room. And she just does that for fun in her free time. And she doesn't have free time. She's a mom of four kids. She uh, works, she was working for the school district as a behavioral aide, which just to survive that job is incredible. But now she's working as a family advocate, going into homes, helping educate people. It's just amazing what she's doing. On top of that, she's doing all these things at home. She did start a blog this year, thishomemadehome.com. You should check it out. It's amazing. It has all her projects on it. And she's just recently started doing YouTube stuff with me so that we can do that. And she's doing a transformation challenge with me. Uh, we're doing a 12-week challenge together. And on top of that, she's just the most amazing mother and wife. And she just takes care of people. She's really active in our church. And she makes sure that her friends in the church are being loved and taken care of. And she's just always looking to help other people. On top of that, she's the main chef in the home. And that's why I'm eating so well. She's the main homemaker and caretaker. So even though she has a full slot slate, she's doing all those other things. Oh, and she's working for the university teaching community art classes. She's done basket weaving, alcohol, ink, and she has a schedule going up for the summer. She's incredible. And I married her. I'm so lucky. It's like the best thing ever. So I have this amazing life. And guess what? Those last five miles were the easiest five miles I've ever run in a marathon. Because I just got to think about how wonderful my family is. And we have our challenges and we have our problems. But for five miles, I didn't have to think about those things. I got to think about all the wonderful, inspiring things that take me off. And you just endured hearing all about my family. But there's a purpose to this. I just really want to hit home. If you're looking at the end of your marathon and you want those five miles to slow, just cruise by, before you go on that run, think of a few people that matter to you. And it might be your spouse, it might be your kids, but you might not have them. Like, gee, I'm tearing up. I love my family so much. If you don't have them, you have someone else in your life. Think about those people who care about you and the inspiration that they can be for you. And think about those for your last few miles. 
You'll crush it. Guarantee it. All right? That's what you got for this week. Love you guys. Talk to you again soon. Bye.